Welcome to the We Can Fix Climate Change podcast. In today's episode, we'll cover the U.S. and China restarting climate talks, Mercedes-Benz's remarkable EV sales growth, European power prices falling below zero, and the projections of renewables generating one-third of all electricity by 2030. Don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date on the latest episodes. The New York Times published a few reports on the U.S. and China climate discussions. The U.S. and China, the world's two biggest polluters, have restarted climate talks in Beijing. The talks are focused on three main issues, methane, deforestation, and the global climate finance system. The success of these talks will have a major impact on the future of climate change. The U.S. and China account for about 40% of global greenhouse gas emissions, So if they can agree on a common approach, it will send a strong signal to other countries and could help to accelerate the transition to a clean energy future. The talks are taking place against a backdrop of rising tensions between the U.S. and China. However, both sides have expressed a desire to cooperate on climate change, and they see the talks as an opportunity to build trust and reduce tensions. In a separate article, the New York Times also reports that Republicans have criticized President Biden's climate envoy, John Kerry, for being too soft on China. Kerry has said that he believes China is committed to addressing climate change, but Republicans say that the country's actions do not match its words. They point to China's continued construction of coal-fired power plants and its slow progress in phasing out coal. Republicans also say that Kerry should be using the climate talks to press China on other issues, such as its human rights record and its trade practices. The climate talks between the U.S. and China are important, but they are also likely to be difficult. Both countries have different priorities, and they will need to find common ground if they are to make progress. So let's dive into some interesting articles published by Electrek last week that shed light on the current state of electric vehicles in the United States. First up, we have some notable sales news from Mercedes-Benz. Their electric vehicle sales in the US, almost 12,000 cars sold, experienced an outstanding growth of over 600% in the last quarter. This surge has lifted their total share of the EV market to 15%. Now here's a bit of a contrast. It seems like not all major automakers are jumping on the EV bandwagon. Toyota and Stellantis, in particular, have expressed their concerns and opposition to the proposed emissions rules by the US Environmental Protection Agency. These companies, often criticised for their slow transition to electric vehicles, argue that the rules are too strict and could hinder their ability to meet targets. They believe that the regulations should take into account the challenges faced by traditional automakers in shifting their production towards EVs. Toyota and Stellantis emphasize the need for a more balanced approach that considers the industry's current capabilities and the availability of charging infrastructure. While they have made commitments to electrification, they are urging the EPA to rethink the proposed rules to ensure a smoother transition to cleaner transportation for themselves. But as they say, save the best for last. Tesla has once again blown expectations out of the water with its delivery numbers for the second quarter. The electric vehicle giant has delivered an incredible 466,000 EVs during this period, surpassing even the market forecasts. This remarkable achievement once again solidifies Tesla's dominance in the EV market and their ability to meet growing demand. Tesla's success can be attributed to various factors such as increased production capacity and successful expansion into new markets. Tesla has managed to build a loyal customer base by prioritizing an eco-friendly approach to transportation. The future of electric vehicles looks promising with increasing numbers of automakers aiming to fulfill the growing demand for cleaner transportation options, while also considering the upcoming deadline for the end of life for internal combustion engines in US and European markets. So, get this. European power prices are actually falling below zero. It's all because of the green power boom that's happening across the continent. Basically, what's happening is that there's been a massive increase in wind and solar energy production. And here's the thing. Sometimes the supply actually exceeds the demand. So during those times, energy suppliers are actually paying consumers to use electricity. 
Now, this shift towards green power sources is not just good news for our wallets, it's also amazing for the environment. With more renewable energy in the mix, we're reducing our reliance on those nasty fossil fuels. And that means a cleaner and more sustainable energy landscape for all of us. The best part? This positive momentum is really getting Europe closer to its goal of a greener future. And hey, it's a win-win situation. Not only are we taking care of our planet, but we're also benefiting as consumers. So let's keep encouraging this green power boom and keep enjoying those low, or should I say negative, power prices. For more on this story, click the link in the description for the Autoblog report titled European Power Prices Fall Below Zero with Green Power Boom. Did you know that renewable energy sources are really making some strides? That's according to a story from Clean Technica called One Third of All Electricity Will Come From Renewables By 2030. A recent report by the International Renewable Energy Agency, IRENA, predicts that by 2030, one third of all electricity will come from renewables. That's right, a whopping third of our power will be generated by clean and green sources like solar, wind and hydropower. So what's fueling this remarkable transition? Well, a combination of falling costs, supportive policies and technological advancements. You see, as the costs of renewable technologies continue to drop, they become increasingly competitive with traditional fossil fuels. This makes it more attractive for investors and policymakers to throw their support behind renewable energy. But it's not just about the numbers and the bottom line. The shift towards renewables brings with it a host of benefits. For one, it helps to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions, which is great news for the environment. It also improves air quality, making our cities cleaner and healthier places to live. And let's not forget about energy security. By diversifying our energy sources and tapping into renewable resources, we've become less dependent on fossil fuels and more resilient in the face of potential disruptions. Of course, all this progress hinges on continued investment and policy support. The report stresses the importance of these factors in ensuring a successful integration of renewables into our global energy mix. In today's episode, we discuss top polluters, U.S. and China restarting climate talks, while facing criticism of John Kerry's strategy, and the urgent need for climate action. We also covered the growth in Mercedes-Benz EV sales, opposition by Toyota and Stellantis against strict emissions rules, and Tesla surpassing delivery expectations. Furthermore, we explored the positive impact of increased green power generation in Europe, which has led to falling power prices and reduced reliance on fossil fuels, benefiting consumers. And finally, we highlighted a report by Irina predicting that renewables will generate one-third of all electricity by 2030, bringing reduced emissions and enhanced energy security. For more information on these stories and the sources cited in this podcast, be sure to visit our weekly Substack newsletter. Links are in the description. Thanks for listening to today's episode. I'll see you guys at the next one and don't forget to subscribe.